I think Harrington Hall as a shelter of last resort is a place that we need in this state. I think, unfortunately, it's the only shelter of last resort we have in the state. The fact that it's open in there, um, until the state finds a solution to add another shelter of last resort, of last resort I don't think that as a someone who you know, believes in helping people, we should just close it. Uh, I've been working directly with the Speaker of the House's office, Nicholas Mattiello, on how we more effectively manage the population of sex offenders in the building. Um, the Cranston Police Department has an on-site detective now whose main job is to make sure that all the sex offenders in the building are tracked. Uh, it's a very difficult problem to solve, because I'd love to just say shut it down. But then I think about the person who really needs that shelter of last resort, and they don't have it. Uh, so it's again, it's, it's a tough spot to be in as an elected official when you hear that people, you know, my, my sister-in-law lives less than a quarter mile away from Harrington Hall when she tells me about the people living in the woods and, and the people who are, have, have tough times right now, and there's a lot of them. And to shut down the shelter of last resort to fix the sex offender issue for me, I just don't think is right. But again, the goal is to continue to work with our state leaders because we need another shelter of last resort somewhere other than Cranston. That's the only way we're going to solve the problem. Um, I love the work that uh, some of the reps have done from Cranston to try to work with the governor to get a shelter of last resort. Unfortunately, that funding got cut in last year's state budget. So until the state comes out and says we need another shelter of last resort, we can't just have it in Cranston, we're going to be in a pickle. So we have to monitor it and manage it the best way we can. Okay. Gail? Um, I read in the paper this morning about Richard Gardner, um, the convicted sex offender who's living on um, New York Avenue. And I thought there was a very interesting loophole in, in what's going on. He evidently was convicted of child molestation before Megan's Law went into effect in 1996. As a result of this, he does not have to report to anybody except the police. And for the life of me, at just being a normal citizen reading this and having granddaughters and now a great-granddaughter who just turned two yesterday, I'm like, why, why, if you were convicted before 1996, does that excuse <coughs> having to report it? The community that you're there. So I think that's one thing that really needs to be looked into. And the, and the article said that um, state lawmakers are looking to do more, but here's something I think as, a, as council people, um, that perhaps our own city council can look into that to see what they can do at a city level. Uh, because it just doesn't make sense. As for the, the Harrington Hall, I, I live in Ward 6. Uh, Representative Lancia uh, has instigated calls, a, a procedure so that if there's a sexual offender at Harrington Hall, we automatically get robocalls letting us know. Now, I'm not sure if that is uh, for any other ward because, of course, Harrington Hall is in our, <coughs> our ward. But if there's another... Um, facility that's opened up for sex offenders, I would recommend that that ward put in the same safeguards that we have in Ward 6 that lets us know. 10 seconds. And, and looking at those Megan Law thing, which makes no sense at all. Amy? I mean, I agree with Council President Mike Farina. I believe there should be another location um, opening up before we close this one. I'd rather see it closed, but it has to be the last resort, it has to be the last resort. Maybe we can put increased security budget on that, because I have a sister that lives off Mayfield Avenue, and they're walking around. I wanna keep our children safe. Um, they're at Fred's Drugstore, they're around the neighborhoods, they're trying to ask them for jewelry, and all this stuff like that and, and kind of they were kind of heckling the neighborhoods that I've been hearing about from Representative Lancia, my sister and all the neighbors that I've been talking to. Councilman Stikos. Uh, I would uh, agree with uh, Councilman Farina's statements that it's a very difficult problem. Um, it's one that uh, I don't think the city council can solve on its own, and we have to uh, work with the work with the state and uh, provide for people who do need housing throughout the state, uh, emergency housing. 
Uh, but the, I don't think anyone has an answer to sexual uh, sex offenders, serious sex offenders, other than uh, uh, castration, frankly. I mean, that's, I'm not advocating that, but uh, from what I've read, that uh, that is uh, about it. And other than that, you have to watch, uh, monitor people, and watch them. Councilman Hopkins. Thank you. Um, for the last two years, I have talked about public safety. And one of the biggest problems we have is at 7 o'clock in the morning, when that Harrington Hall empties out into our community, we need to protect our kids going to school, our p kids riding buses. Uh, I've talked to uh, the detective, uh, Padawani, who runs the program, and on a daily basis, he will send out when they're released and where they're moving to. We've got issues not just at Harrington Hall, but where they're moving to. We have one issue on Reservoir Avenue, where many of them have moved into an apartment building on Reservoir that's near a school that's owned by somebody from outside of our city. I think that's an issue that needs to be addressed. I would highly recommend that we put the Rhode Island State Police Headquarters or a branch of that on the campus. I think that in itself and the presence of the State Police in that area will, will give us a feeling of more protection, but at the same time, when these people are released in the morning, uh, they, they won't dare come into our community because all you have to do is go to this library that had to hire a full-time security guard because of the uh, offenders coming in here. Or to go to the Dunkin' Donuts across the street in the morning and see people hanging out over there. And we don't know where they're from, what they're doing. Uh, we have many kids in the area that could be, uh, could be attacked. Uh, I say strongly that we need a greater uh, police presence in the area, and I think the state needs to step up and put up state police headquarters on those grounds. Did everybody get a chance to speak? I did not. Okay, I'm sorry, sir. I, um, I feel like the Harrington Hall is a tough um, situation. I think um, we need probably another facility. I hear that oftentimes it's over capacity, so the state definitely needs another last resort facility someplace other than Cranston. I feel like we get are somewhat the dumping grounds. Um, we have the ACI and uh, we have um, Harrington Hall, uh, both in close proximity here in Ward 6. So um, I think um, I remember back when I was uh, campaigning before and, and learning that we get reimbursed at the same rate and I don't know whether it's true. I, I, I need to double check it. It is something I uh, was bugging Mattiello about because uh, we get reimbursed at the same rate that Providence does for having their colleges, for having the ACI. And, uh, but the ACI, <laughs> the inmates are not buying, um, buying lattes at Starbucks uh, or clothing on the streets, on Thayer Street. So um, I, I feel like, um, that's something that needs to be looked at, and, and maybe we could petition for greater funding. Uh, we could pass it on to the schools, maybe. Uh, but uh, that, is, that is an unfair uh, burden on our community. Um, I don't know um, if there's some way we could be notified when it's over capacity um, so that we could have increased um, funding on those days or something and we could sort of tie it in there or uh, have a, a police monitor better police monitoring when they're let out uh, and make sure they're um, they're not um, I guess hassling 10 seconds people. but uh, yeah I have run into some issues even at uh, Whole Foods being petitioned for rides and things like that um, but uh, I, I feel like these people do need some place healthy to be um, 